Hello, everyone. Here we are once more、uh, for another great interview.、Uh, this time we have someone from Austria, and this is Christopher Just. He is a, actually a living legend of electronic music. But let's start by the very beginning. Christopher, how are you doing? How are you? Hi, Gonzalo.、Uh, very nice to meet you and to have this interview with you. Yes, I'm fine. I'm here in Vienna, Austria. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's a beautiful day. All right. Thank you so much then for、uh, the, this interview with us.、Uh, and, and let's start by the very beginning.、Um, I have been reading about you for a long time, actually, and.、Um, The first thing that comes、uh, then noticeably is that you have mentioned in your biography that、uh, you had a normal childhood,、uh, then that you quit your high school, and that that you had your first、uh, then opportunity as a DJ,、uh, then、uh, at a gay bar. So what was it like, and how did you then to get this chance to start as a DJ? Well, it was uh, like this uh, in this place,、uh, which was owned by uh, uh,、um, the uncle of a good friend.、Uh, I did for a while the wardrobe, just for getting, you know, some pocket money. And they had a resident DJ, and one day this resident DJ、uh, was sick or something like this, and、uh, the owner of the bar said, "Hey, come on, Christopher. I know that、uh, you are into music, so." This is your possibility. Do you want to take it? And、uh, I was a little bit frightened, but at the end I said、oh, yes, and I tried it out, and it went、uh, very well. So, and after a while, I went played more often and often there, and、uh, this was yeah, this was the start of my DJ career. Oh, all right. So yes, you took your chance there. And what what were the records that you play at that bar? And、um, did you have them with you already? They were、uh, they were like kind of your personal collection, or did you buy them、uh, regularly? So, and what I learned in this、uh, gay bar was. To uh, uh, really to take care and to play with the mood of the of the audience because it was a, a normal restaurant, but sometimes the people there really like to freak out. So you had to change the mood and also the records、uh, very fast and、uh, yes and、uh, to go with the flow and even also uh, yeah to uh, uh, fire uh, on the the audience with the music. You know what I mean. It can be a very demanding job in、uh, that kind of bar or restaurant, then to follow people's mood.、Uh, but then、uh, that teaches you、um, uh, lots of things about what works and what doesn't work on the dance floor. Especially when then a little later you got your first、uh, then synthesizer or keyboard and started to produce music.、Um, so、uh, was that experience a valuable one?、Uh, did it help you then to produce music later on what worked at that time? Yes, it it helped me a lot because I learned、uh, that it's possible to mix very different styles of music together. You know, to let one completely different song follow to another,、uh, which helped me or which 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 shows me that it's fun uh, to uh, combine uh, uh, things uh, from completely different areas. Let's say.、Uh, Put、uh, samples together who are who doesn't who don't ma- match at the uh, first uh, moment, and、um, yes, and about、uh, producing music,、uh, I was always interested with with、uh, cutting songs, you know, because there were a lot of songs in the eighties、uh, where the, the electronic stuff, like let's say, out of noise and and this.、Um, Uh, uh, kind of music,、uh, el- electronic music.、Um, where there were some parts I didn't like so much, so I uh, started uh, to cut on tape uh, uh, several parts out, and、uh, instead of this, I looped other parts. And、uh, I, this was a kind of uh, uh, already working like with a sampler, you know. And then uh, yes, um, I got my、uh, first sampler when I was maybe、uh, 16 years old. It was a very little. Uh, uh, sampler with,、uh, I think, a few seconds, maybe four seconds of sampling time, but、uh, I managed to、uh, produce with with this machine、uh, the first tracks. Yeah. And what was the process then to get、uh, then these songs you have composed then into a vinyl record? Because at that time you had either vinyl records or cassettes.、Uh, so what was the the process like in 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 Vienna or in Austria? 
or did you try several labels around Europe? Because we didn't have at that time uh, the kind of technology and communication that we have today. What was the process like? Well, uh, it was um, first when I, uh, I I got then my second sampler and the first synthesizers because uh, I found out some stuff uh, you cannot do with a sampler. You need some uh, machines who are uh, oscillating somehow. And uh, I was uh, asking around and, and, and found out that, uh, for example, the bass line 303 gets this great sound uh, which I wanted to work and then later uh, drum machines like 808 and 909. So first I just uh, played around with these machines just for having fun and 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 uh, yeah just uh, for get the experience uh, about sounds for my own. So there was not the intention to produce a record. Um, and then uh, I met my partner, my later partner from Ilsa Gold, Peter, and he uh, had uh, uh, a sequencer, it was a computer with a Cubase in, and uh, we just produced for fun records. And then when here in Vienna the first techno party start, started, then we uh, we asked for playing live there and uh, yes, uh, our uh, gigs were pretty successful and at one of, of those gigs a guy came over and said, uh, um, I want to, to uh, open up a record label. Uh, what do you think? Would you like to, uh, um, would you like to uh, uh, make a record with us? And we were very happy and surprised because uh, in, in our opinion it uh, was always like this that you, you know your record a tape then you send it to a company nobody is listening to it they, they throw it into the uh, into the garbage and that's it so we we were very lucky and we said yes yes sure we want to produce a record with, with your label and yes this was the time when uh, the indie labels uh, uh, started here in Vienna and people uh, 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 didn't uh, uh, um, work on the on the normal structures like uh, big companies they just uh, uh, created their own labels and and uh, produced a, a small range of records and, and sent it out in the world so that's how it started awesome then by playing live and then you know getting co in contact with someone that wanted to start up a label you were absolute pioneers uh, at that time uh, which is a model of business that is repeated nowadays now tell me over the years um have you kept producing music with hardware or have you then integrated software or you know something in between Yes, um, over the years I uh, collected more and more synthesizers. Uh, uh, after a while I had the most uh, important Roland stuff. Then later I watched out for the ARP uh, 2600, for example, or MOOC stuff. And, you know, because um, um, uh, still uh, until the end of, of, of the last... Uh, <laughs> Uh, millennium uh, it was pretty uh, difficult uh, to work just with a computer because the software was too, sl too slow and the plugins were also uh, not sounding so well um, so I preferred uh, to stay as long as possible with the real machines uh, even it was sometimes uh, um, uh, I preferred to stay with with the real uh, uh, hardware stuff even if it was sometimes not possible uh, to store sounds or you know what I mean. But um, uh, maybe from uh, when I moved to New York, uh, it was in 2007, I think. Then I started to produce more and more uh, with the computer and with plugins, which was uh, has also its advantages, I would say. But uh, uh, all in all, uh, you produce produce completely differently because you have always you know this uh, kind of matrix in front of you so uh, it often happens that uh, you make some um, yeah very functional stuff and the experiment uh, uh, then stays in the background and also the the session character which i really prefer so uh, at the moment i don't produce a lot but if i do some stuff i prefer again to play with uh, with, with hardware stuff because because it's more fun and uh, unexpected things happen. That is so true. Sometimes those unexpected things uh, then become a huge success. It's like something unintended and, uh, you know, it has a destiny 
for something big. Now, tell me about moving to New York. Then, how did that influence you in all of your art? Because you can then uh, design clothes, you can also uh, draw as a cartoonist, uh, but also compose music. So, did you combine that all together in New York, or did it then uh, change your taste? Um, how, what, how was the process of going to New York changed you? Moving to, to New York was uh, showed me that if you want to do a thing, if you really want to do, you can do it and uh, you just have to do it, you know. It was like a, a big thing first for me to uh, give up everything here because, uh, yes, uh, I, give up, I gave up my apartment, uh, I sold all my uh, synthesizers uh, to afford uh, this trip, uh, I mean, this, the living there. And uh, uh, I was a little bit afraid, uh, for sure, at, at, uh, uh, in the first moment. But uh, then being there and seeing the, the possibilities you have there uh, really changed everything. So uh, we just, uh, because I went there with, with my girlfriend at this time, I had it this time, and we just found out if you do what you do and you mean it serious and you are behind it, uh, People uh, in New York will uh, uh, accept it and uh, will take it with open arms. So our experience was very positive. Um, I mean, I have to say, we had one person, uh, a DJ called Larry T, who opened us uh, the first door. And when somebody is there who opened you, opens you the first door, uh, then you can go on. If you know anybody, it's uh, maybe more difficult. So, and we started there uh, uh, to do parties, and they liked somehow our approach. It was very wild stuff, you know. We combined a lot of strange live acts and DJ, let's say, from house uh, until Mexican uh, uh, metal bands. And it was always very funny. And... Um, uh, also, the, the the electronic music uh, uh, from uh, in in those years, uh, from 2007 to 2010, uh, was at a peak. I think it was the time of, uh, let's say, uh, for example, Justice and uh, Soul Wax and this stuff. So this what we call now uh, EDM, but in a good way, you know, not trash. Uh, so really uh, strong music uh, with a good fun character, but also qualitative. So, and yes, and uh, I changed there from playing vinyl to uh, playing uh, uh, CD when I DJ. Um, I was very skeptic uh, always with playing, uh, playing with CD, but I found out um, that uh, the time uh, you win by mixing, because it goes very fast to mix with CD, you can use for doing a lot of, of crazy stuff with effects and, and different uh, machines and looping while DJing. So DJ becomes with playing uh, over CD players uh, a little bit more in the direction live act, if you know uh, how to do it. Um, yes, and all in all, New York was a great experience. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy uh, that we did it. And after three years, uh, uh, when I decided to go back, uh, it was just because of, um, yes, I feel uh, a little bit uh, homesick, you know, I wanted to see my family uh, again and stuff like this. So, uh, but I, I really uh, uh, can recommend uh, Try out, uh, if you have to, uh, the, the wish or the feeling you, ha you want to live in another city for a while, do it. It's always a great experience. They can always come back. Having fun and really also having sense of humor then with, with your performances is really great. And when you got back uh, to um, then Austria, um, did you find the same music scene? Uh, or how do you see the music scene in Austria evolving over the years? And what do you bring them from New York to Austria uh, then for the people to, to enjoy and to discover? Mm, I had the impression that I was musical-wise uh, uh, somehow a bit in front. Uh, because um, when I came back, they were still, uh, let's say, more into minimal. And I came back with this maximal stuff. And uh, it was very fresh for the people here. Also, uh, my new way of mixing uh, very different styles together instead of playing uh, one style uh, the whole set through. So, 
And um, yes, and it was also an advantage to uh, have been away for a while because uh, they treated me not like a resident. Uh, uh, instead of this, they treated me like a, like an international act. And I got very, very much gigs and um, uh, also uh, uh, good fees. Um, but uh, for sure, after a while, I became a resident again here. But uh, uh, my impression was it was a very good time in, in from 2010 to 2012 also, and it became also a good time here in Vienna. We had very, very good new clubs, uh, uh, small places, very special venues, pretty fucked up the whole scene, and uh, uh, very, very, very much fun there. So uh, I like those days in Vienna. I see. So then it was a refreshing uh, breath of air uh, to the scene. And uh, these days, are you more focused into musical production, into releasing music through your labels? Uh, or then have you then acquire more uh, skills? And are you then having other outlets, creatively speaking? No. Uh, some years ago, I started uh, writing. And uh, two years ago, I released my first novel and this year my second. And I'm completely into this now. Um, uh, from time to time, I play a little bit around uh, uh, with doing music, but uh, writing is really, really in, in front. And uh, uh, because I got a, a real fascination when I'm doing this. You know, you have the same possibilities with doing music. Everything is possible, uh, even more, because, uh, you know, you have everything, uh, you can use everything, uh, uh, you have uh, unendless uni universes of things uh, when you write. Um, and um, that's uh, uh, why I, I'm so into it. And. Um, for me, it's very important. If I do something, somehow I have to, to burn for it, you know? And this feeling uh, I have uh, now when, when, when I write stuff. Uh, with music, uh, this feeling went a little bit away in the, in the, in the last years. Um, maybe because uh, uh, I'm getting old now, <laughs> uh, or maybe because I have the impression that um, since a while electronic music uh, stays more or less at the same point and there is no uh, big new uh, um, development or a big new break, you know. Um, and uh, I still wait for a track uh, I uh, do not understand anymore, and which really, really surprises me. And maybe if this uh, this track uh, comes, uh, then uh, uh, my interest will come back, and and uh, I will uh, uh, try to find an answer on this. You know, but at the moment, uh, uh, writing is is uh, absolutely my thing. Definitely, you can capture a lot of things through writing, and really, you know. Uh, excites people's mind. Have you ever considered, for example, to uh, then to collect all your memories from gigs, traveling, uh, producing music, into some kind of not biography, but something that you know uh, the best, the most juicy parts of uh, that nobody knows, but that's so also fun because you still have your sense of humor. Uh, so, uh, would you like then, for example, at some point in life? to bring all those memories together in a big book for DJs, producers and all your followers? When I'm, when I'm writing, I use already a lot of those memories, especially from, from those days, as you said, especially the juicy stuff. And uh, I, I, re I really uh, can take a lot out of, of, of this period. Um, but uh, to write a special uh, story or novel just about, uh, you know, my experience or my life as a DJ or about uh, the electronic music scene. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if it's really interesting for me and also for others. All those kind of books uh, who are existing already, uh, I never really found them very special or, or interesting. And um, I prefer really to, to use uh, parts of, of uh, uh, this time uh, uh, and to put it into completely different stories. 
But uh, well, you, you never know. Maybe one day I have an approach which is uh, interesting enough for me to try it out. So eventually it, it will happen. All right. And if that ever happens, I want it please with a CD uh, or a pen drive with a soundtrack to it. So at any portions of the book, I can also listen to the music that you indicate. That would be really nice and interesting uh, than to have a, you know, an immersive concept in a book with music and, you know, something that a pointer would give us a clue on what's next on that story. But now tell me um, what should be, and because this has been quite a long interview, uh, then what should be the message or your legacy to all of your fans around the world? Well, message, pretty easy. I would say just do the things you want to do. Um, do the things you have to do. Uh, stay always by yourself. Uh, don't do things because you want to please or don't uh, change the things you do because you think others would like it more in this way because then if they don't then the damage is doubled so i would say do your own thing that's it for me and don't do it for money do it just for the feeling that you are satisfied with it wow i have never thought of that concept of double damage but totally makes sense and I didn't ever uh, think of it. So thank you so much for that piece of thought. It's really revealing. And um, I have to thank you also uh, then that you have some, you have spent some minutes with us. It has been really a great interview. And uh, I love your enthusiasm uh, then all the way through, you know, all these years that you have never stopped to produce and, you know, to put out from your imagination into music, into writing into drawing. Uh, so thank you so much for being such a great artist and, and bringing uh, this joy to the world. Hey, thank you too. It was a great pleasure for me. It was great for me to uh, talk with Uruguay, really. And um, yes, I wish you all the best. And um, yeah, maybe uh, someday some new stuff will come up uh, from my side. All right, and this has been then History, Words, Wisdom and Fun with Christopher Just. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and keep on listening to Vitamina DJ News.